Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Text, as you heard Pastor Tig announce, is our ongoing reading of the book of Acts today from chapter 16. So we've been traipsing around with Paul ever since his dramatic conversion a few weeks back, witnessing the resurrection change everything everywhere that he went. And today's reading from Acts marks the beginning of Paul's second missionary journey. For nearly two years, Paul and his companions would work their way around the Aegean Sea, telling the story of Jesus' resurrection, forming small communities of Jesus' followers, laying the foundation of the movement called The Way that would transform the world. Resurrection, this changes everything. So let's watch closely today as God opens opportunities for this resurrection change and let's consider what he's up to in your life and in mine. There are three openings in our text. First, God opens the opportunity for Paul to enter into Macedonia. Then God opens Lydia's heart to receive the gospel message of life and salvation in Jesus. And then Lydia opens her home as the center for gospel work in the city of Philippi. First, God opens the opportunity for Paul to enter Macedonia. Now that God is the one actually opening this opportunity is apparent in the verses immediately preceding our text. Paul, who has been passionate and determined to carry this life-changing word of resurrection throughout the known world, is directed specifically not to enter into Asia at this time. Then he's turned and he's told not to enter into Bithynia just now. And then through a vision, he received the command to enter Macedonia. Now, I don't know how you read these accounts, but for me, always at first glance, it's easy to be envious at such direct communication from God. How come, how come I never get to hear God speaking directly to me? <laughs> and then I was having breakfast with a member a few weeks back, and, and he quipped that whenever someone says that to him, he tells them, well, if you want to hear God speaking to you directly... Just read your Bible out loud. And you know, that's actually brilliant. Because when you stop to think about it, the Bible is accessible 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And because the Bible is more than just words, because it is God's own words, living and active, the writer of Hebrews says, then the more you read it, hear it, learn it, and inwardly digest it, the louder God will speak, showing you the opportunities that he is opening for you. There was a man from Macedonia urging him, saying, come over and help us. So here's my appeal to you this morning, personally, and all of us together as a congregation, that we would be so immersed in God's living and active word that we could look around and pay attention to who at any given moment in time is saying, come over and help us. I mean, families need help. Knowing the promises of God and living into a biblical worldview, that's the kingdom of God, that's the world put, right? Through faith in Jesus, which is the greatest blessing that they could give their children. Youth need help navigating an increasingly confusing culture that has lots of comedic messages. Older adults like me need some help adjusting to my changing physical conditions and the inability to do everything that I used to be able to do. 
Men need help coming to know Jesus intimately and personally rather than just religiously going through the motions. Women need help connecting and networking for the gospel to penetrate every part of their life. Believers need help living out the Jesus adventure, experiencing a life of freedom and joy and sacrifice and renewal. There are underchurched and dechurched people who have been turned off and turned away from organized religion religion that need help finding their way back into a community that lovingly stands for something. Ukrainians need help. People living on the edge of making ends meet in this economy need help. God is opening opportunities all around us and we are called to deliver the gospel. But what exactly is that? The little word gospel, I'm afraid, has almost lost its meaning for many people. So let me remind you again that the word literally translates good news. To bring or to announce good news. It was a technical term in military settings to declare victory. That the battle was over. That the danger had passed. And the good news is we have won. Hence... Oyangalizomai, good news, became the word to signify all that Jesus Christ accomplished by his birth, life, death, resurrection, ascension, and promised coming again in glory. That all your sins are forgiven, that eternal life has begun even now, and that our future is absolutely secure. And then we can look around, we can open up our eyes, and we can begin to see opportunities to bring that good news into the lives of people in need. Now the application of this is pretty simple. It is as simple as being present in the lives of people in need. It's, it's, it's showing up. And listening to their story and being curious about their hopes and their dreams and their fears. And then being ready to speak Jesus in the vernacular of the person that you're with. What do you mean, speak Jesus? Look, there's not a cookbook. There is no list of phrases. There are no magic words. One of our members who is as down to earth as you'd ever hoped to meet has discovered that when people share with her what's happening in their lives and she says, I'll pray for you, she has never once had anyone respond, don't you dare do that. No, look, people welcome prayer even if they aren't sure about who it is you're actually praying to. And that in turn can lead to other conversations of who God is and how he has answered or sometimes seemingly not answered her prayers. Look, it's all about being in or seeking to enter relationships with our neighbors, with the people that you come into contact with, with your own family, listening from the perspective that the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything and simply wanting to show it and to share it verbally by your attitudes and your actions. And now the text gets to a specific case. First, God opens the opportunity for Paul to enter Macedonia. Next, God is going to open the heart of a specific person named Lydia to pay attention to what Paul said. These are real geographical locations. The spread of the gospel is rooted in historical reality. Philippi was a thoroughly Roman colony that was steeped in the religion and the culture of Rome. Ten Jewish men were required to establish a synagogue and none existed in Philippi. 
Probably partly because when the Roman emperor, Claudius, had expelled the Jews from Rome, Philippi, as a Roman colony, had followed suit. And so Paul and his commandants entered into a city that was markedly different from the other places that they had visited on the first missionary journey. Now, any student of history will tell you that our culture is becoming more and increasingly similar to first century Roman culture. Idolatry is is more rampant than it has ever been before, and it looks different today because we don't actually have temples to the Roman pantheon of gods where people go up to worship and to seek to gain the gods' favor. No, our idolatry is the pantheon of wealth, success, relationships, entertainment, and pleasure. An idol is simply anything that you look to for your happiness or that you turn to for your sense of security. And let's just be honest with ourselves this morning and admit that we spend a good deal of our time and our money searching for something that will satisfy the deepest longing of the human soul only to discover what has been known for centuries that nothing can fill the God-shaped hole in our hearts except God. Paul went looking for people who might be open to hear the good news. Well, there's an intriguing idea. Look, COVID has turned many of us into homebodies. But it might be time to start venturing out again. Probably many of you already have. Can you ask yourself, where do people gather Is there a a local restaurant, a coffee shop, a community center where if you were to go there regularly over a period of time, you would start to see and to recognize some of the same people? And then Paul and his companions sat down and talked. Are you willing to share in a conversation? I mean, surely the most straightforward way is simply to ask questions. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you do? Tell me about your family. Look, I'm not asking you to become a stalker. I'm only asking you to be genuinely curious about other people for the purpose of getting to know them as an unrepeatable miracle of God and then being alert to the opportunity that God will open for you to speak Jesus. Look, these accounts recorded in Acts are very condensed. They're they're collapsed to show us the bare-bone basics of how God opens hearts to receive the gospel. But it doesn't take much imagination and just a little research to sort of unpack the story. Look at the verse. What's your name? Lydia. Where are you from? Thyatira. What do you do? I have a business selling goods dyed purple. What are you doing here? I am a worshiper of God. Lydia is a Gentile. That means she's not of Jewish descent. But as was common in the era, the rigmarole of Roman religion had left her empty and she found herself attracted to the beauty and to the structure of the Jewish belief in one God who had made a promise to a man named Abraham to bless all of the nations through one of his descendants and who had delivered to to Moses a way of living that brought dignity and deep connection within a sense of community to those who believed in this God. Lydia would have learned about an intricate sacrificial system that allowed people who failed to live up to this standard God had set could be forgiven and they could try again. 
She was from Thyatira. That's a city that was world-renowned for its production of a purple dye, of which only a drop could be extracted from a certain shellfish that flourished in the waters nearby. And because it was very rare and it was hard to get, it was expensive, and therefore it was very popular among the wealthy. The rich man in Luke chapter 16 was clothed in purple and in fine linen. And so we're fairly confident to surmise that, that Lydia was a wealthy businesswoman who had some number of employees who owned her own home large enough to accommodate four missionaries, Paul and his three companions, Silas, Timothy, and Luke, the author of this account. But here's the critical point. God opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul said. Now, do you know what a huge relief that is? That means if you will simply be present, if you will be curious enough to get to know someone, God is responsible for opening his or her heart to pay attention to the good news about Jesus. And you can almost hear Paul say, Lydia, I have the key to unlock this whole Abraham, Moses, and sacrificial system. His name is Jesus. He's Abraham's descendant. He lived the perfect life defined by Moses. And then he willingly sacrificed himself on a cross to take away the sins of the world. Then rose from the dead. And his resurrection now changes everything. When we immerse ourselves in the story of God recorded for us in the Bible and we engage with curiosity the people in our lives, God is in charge of opening their hearts to hear our story, how, how we came to believe in Jesus and what difference he has made in our lives. But God opened the opportunity for Paul to go to Macedonia. Then God opened Lydia's heart to pay attention to what Paul said about Jesus. And then Lydia turned around and opened her home. No, I would go even farther and say she opened her life to advance the gospel in Philippi. She and her household, however that many that was, whoever that included, also listened to Paul, and God opened their hearts too, and they were all baptized. And there began a congregation that would go on to provide financial support to Paul throughout his ministry and to whom he would write my favorite epistle in the New Testament, the letter to the Philippians. Now, interestingly, Lydia did not change her name. She didn't sell her business. She didn't fire all of her employees. She didn't abandon her home and join Paul on his missionary journeys. She became instead a resource for the advancement of the gospel right where she was. But the resurrection changes the way that you look at everything that you have and suddenly your home isn't just a place you live it's a satellite location of St. Luke's Lutheran Church for sharing the gospel and your time and your talent aren't just how you earn a living. They are the resources waiting to be engaged people in the only work that will endure for eternity. God is opening opportunities. God will open hearts. And God is opening our lives to speak and to live the good news of Jesus into the lives of the people around us, crying for someone to come over and help. Amen.
Now the peace that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in this true faith unto life everlasting.